All right, well, let's say that one together. Proverbs 17, here we go. Proverbs 17, and behold, there met him a woman with the attire of an harlot and subtle of heart. Proverbs 7, 10. Amen. Father, as we look at this uh, last uh, lesson here to uh, look at the uh, attire that we uh, clothe ourselves in, I pray you speak to our hearts and and God, may we be changed from the inside out, and then may we never uh, just uh, conform uh, to a standard, Lord, but have uh, the Word of God in our hearts. We might be truly transformed from the inside out. Uh, we thank you for this study that we've been going over the last several months, uh, different by design. What a blessing has been in my heart, and I pray it's been a blessing to everybody here. And as we look at this last lesson uh, for a while, I pray that the truths of it would press upon our hearts and stick in our minds. And uh, Lord, at you, we give the praise, the honor, and the glory. Thank you so much for what you've given us. Now bless uh, your word and through our lives in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 All right. What we are looking at right now is question number two on lesson number four. And if you've got your books, does anybody need a book, by the way? Everybody's got one? Okay. You guys are on page uh, 34. And the first number one was the way you dress always matters to God. Mm -hmm. And then the blanks uh, should be filled out. Uh, Christ lives in us is that first blank and then uh, simply put I should be willing to identify my life as a Christian through my appearance and that was the second blank there all right uh, the third the second question there the way you dress identifies your character and level of respect we filled that in as well so if you weren't here uh, character and level of respect what, what needs to be filled in and uh, what we looked at uh, so far is that God is concerned about what you and I wear because we reflect Christ. And because we reflect Christ, he is concerned about what we wear. Question number two then is going to talk about how we dress identifies our character and level of respect. What does character mean? What is character? How you conduct yourself. How you conduct yourself? What else? What is character? What is character? Rose? Personality. Okay, that's the end. What defines you, okay, what you're known as, your reputation, that, that, that's character, you know. Uh, what's actually, who's the real you? What's really inside, okay? So this question then says, uh, the way you and I dress identifies our character and level of respect. Amen. Now think about that. Level of respect. So how you dress actually... Yep conveys or portrays mm -hmm. a level of respect that you either want or don't want. Amen. Interesting. Yeah. And so we've looked at some things so far uh, in this. We looked at uh, uh, 1 Peter 3, yeah. verses 2 and 3, about the, the woman who needed to have her outward adorning not be as important as the inward adorning. And then we looked at Matthew uh, chapter 11 and verses 7 and 9. We talked about the soft raiment or the homosexual clothing that some people wear, amen, and how Jesus pointed that out, that that's not how John the Baptist was. But some men are that way, yeah. amen, uh, homosexual in their appearance. And uh, by the way, back in the days, back when I was young, before uh, homosexuality became trendy, yes. what characterized a homosexual back in the days? Serge? Earrings. 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 Wow. Uh, what else characterized them? The way they dress? How, how did they normally dress? Flashy. More feminine, more flashy, like you would see a female dress. And how did they often walk? Back in the days, you could tell who was mm, and who wasn't. And how did they normally talk? Yes, sir. Sweet, girly, like girly, soft. I remember we had a, a young man in our teenage Sunday school class over in Belgium. Uh, Brittany, you met him too. Uh, we brought our teenagers up there, and nobody couldn't tell me the boy wasn't sweet. Oh boy. I mean, everything pointed to that. I mean, the way he talked, the way he dressed. Uh, guess what his spare, hob spare, spare time hobby was? But Perkins? Uh, <laughs> well, that might have been. I didn't notice that one. No, not cross-dressing. No, not sewing. No, not really fashion, but you're in the ballpark. No, you're in the ballpark. He, Serge. No. <laughs> no. He did girls' hair. Girls' hair. He was a beautician. 
I mean, he loved doing the ladies' hair, and he was popular. All the girls wanted him to do their hair, and he was good at it. But I mean, he talked. Uh, I mean, the first time I met him, I thought, mm. uh, but he had a girlfriend. Uh, he's a very handsome young man, very attractive young man, but man, he had all the tendencies of somebody soft. And, and I don't know where he went at, from that point on, but I mean, he ran track. Wow. But just his, the way he carried himself, his demeanor, I thought, you've got too many of the wrong hormones, I think, <laughs> on the female side. Amen. Uh, now, uh, nobody told me he was funny. Nope. But he always hung around girls. Oh, boy. He always did hair. Wow. I don't know of any guy friends that he had. <laughs> now, what happened to him after he graduated from high school and left? I, I have no idea. <laughs> I don't want to think about that. Amen. Hey, <laughs> Uh, but he was, he was soft, amen. It said a man in, in, in soft raiment, Jesus had pointed that out. Uh, and he was making a, a point that there's a clear distinction between the clothing of a man and the clothing of a woman. And he said that uh, the men in cloth, uh, soft clothing, they were in the king's palaces and houses and things of that nature. And uh, you want to be clearly masculine or clearly feminine, amen. And that's pretty much why. Different by design. We're different by design. We want to be clearly masculine. Uh, there's this Patch the Pirate song, uh, Brother Serge, uh, he knows about it. Uh, and the little girl's talking about her dad. And uh, she says, there's this man I'm thinking about. He's strong, he's handsome, and blah, 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 blah. And then she goes into singing this song, I want to marry daddy when I grow up. I want to marry daddy when I grow up. And uh, G2 heard it, and he said, daddy, I love you too, and I want to marry you. I said, oh, son, no, 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 son. I said, that's a little girl singing that. And I said, I know, you love me, and I love you. I said, but if you're going to, I said, you think about mommy, you know, somebody like mommy. We want to be clearly masculine here. I love you. Let's hug up and kiss and all that other stuff, amen. But when it comes to marriage and relationships, amen. you want to look at mommy, amen. amen. I said, let's get the record straight. You can sing the song all you want to, but just remember, that's a girl singing about her daddy, amen. not a boy singing about his daddy, amen. Daddy, amen. Uh, so, uh, clearly it needs to be a distinction here, amen. And then we come to Proverbs chapter 7 and verse 10. So let's go over there. Uh, those are the areas that we've looked at so far. And uh, in here, uh, your first uh, blank there was, uh, in other words, your heart purity and holiness should define what you wear. Your heart purity and holiness should define what you wear. And uh, then we come over to Proverbs. And in Proverbs here, the same principle is being applied here uh, relating to the, the, the clothing of an harlot. And Bible, the Bible is clear in this passage here that different people, different types of people des dress differently based upon your question. Uh, the way you dress identifies your character and level of respect. Different types of people de dress differently. Would y'all agree? Yes. Amen. Different people dress differently. Notice what it says here in verse number uh, 10. 10. Uh, and in the twilight, oh, that's wrong. And, and behold, there met him a woman. Now we, we know there's a woman meeting a man. And it says, with the attire of an harlot. Now, again, I brought this up last week. Does it say she is a harlot? No. No. It never says she is a harlot. It says with the attire of a harlot. Okay. Uh, it, it would be now. Does it doesn't mean that she is a harlot? That's right. It would be the same as if uh, Brother Perkins put his uniform. He washed it, and the season is over. And then the next season started up. I got Brother Perkins' uniform. I got my number nine. I go out on the field. What am I? I'm in the attire of a football player. Does that mean I am a football player? No. They can just take a look at me and find out I'm not a football player. Amen. But I have the. I'm trying to play the role. Yeah. Okay. So it doesn't say this woman is a harlot, but the clothing are, are, of an harlot. Okay. By the way, uh, Jesus pointed out that men, men of God dress one way and homosexuals dress another way. This wicked woman dresses yet another way. Uh, it says, they met him a woman with the attire of a harlot and subtle of heart. So she's tricky. Amen. There, there's something crafty about her. Now, what I want to bring out in this is the way you dress, as the question uh, says there, uh, identifies your character and level of respect. It doesn't mean you are that way. Right but it associates you with that person. Let me show you an example of that. Go back to Genesis. Genesis. <clears throat> Genesis chapter number 38. So the way you dress says something. And what we want to be is uh, people that will please God in the way we dress and not man. Genesis chapter number 38. Now this is one of the, uh, the passages of the Bible that's actually very disgusting right in the middle of... Um, 
Joseph being dealt with. And in this passage of scripture, Judah here goes down and marries a young lady and, uh, 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 and uh, has some kids and things like that. And then he has these kids that are waiting for their wives. And uh, what happened here is uh, right. uh, the, 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 the son here is waiting mm. or the, the, the wife here is waiting for the sons to grow up so she can uh, marry one of them. And in the process of time, the sons aren't given to her. And so she gets a little upset about that, and she's going to play a trick on Judah because oh. Judah should have given the sons to her. Yes, sir. And let's pick it up in verse number 14. 14. Uh, matter of fact, um, let's pick it up in verse 11. 11. Then said Judah to Tamar, his daughter-in-law, remain a widow at thy father's house till Shelah, my son, be grown. That's what happened. For uh, he said, let's peradventure he die also, and, and as his brethren did. And Tamar went and dwelt in her father's house. And in process of time, the daughter of Shua, Judah's wife, died, and Judah was comforted and went into the sheep shears uh, to Timnath, he and his friends, Hira and uh, Adulamite, the Adulamite. And it was told Tamar, saying, Behold, thy father-in-law goeth to Timnath to shear his sheep. So he's going up there, and she hears about it. Notice this, verse 14, and she put her widow's garments off her. The widows dress a certain way. Yes. yes. Clearly, it was depicted back then that widows dressed a certain way. And so she put off her widow's garments. How do widows normally dress at a funeral? Black. 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 Yep. Okay. She put off her widow's garments from her and covered her uh, with a veil and wrapped herself and sat in an open place, which is, by the way, to Timnath. For she saw that Sheila was grown and she was not given unto him to wife. Okay. Notice verse 15. When Judah saw her, he thought her to be an what? Harlot, why? Because she had covered her face. And he turned unto her by the way and said, Go to, I pray thee, let me come in unto thee. For he knew not that she was his daughter-in-law. And she said, What wilt thou give me that thou mayest come into me? Now, keep going down there with me. Now, so, so far she's covering her face. She's portraying to be an harlot. So obviously, she has the garments of an harlot that she has taken off the widow's garments. So is a harlot clearly defined by how she dresses? Yes. 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 Keep going. Verse number um, 17, and he said, I will send thee a kid from the flock. And she said, Will thou give me a pledge uh, till thou send it? And he said, What pledge shall I give thee? And she said, Thy signet and thy bracelets and thy staff that is in thine hand. And he gave it her and came in unto her, and she conceived by him. So now his, his daughter-in-law now is pregnant by him. Verse 19, and she arose and went away and laid by her veil from her, that was part of her garments, and put on the garments of her, what? Widowhood. Okay? Uh, go all the way down now. Well, no, let's just keep reading. Then he asked the men of that place, saying, where is the harlot that was openly by the wayside? And they said there was no harlot in this place. So how did he know she was a harlot? The way she dressed. Now, how come they didn't see a harlot in the place? She changed her clothes. She went back to changing, yeah. She went back to her widow. So when he came to look for her, they said, there was no widow. There was nobody dressed like that around here. We, we, we know what they look like. And notice verse 22. And he returned to Judah and said, I cannot find her. Uh, and also the men of the, the place said that, that there was no harlot in this place. And Judah said, let her take it to her, lest we be ashamed. Behold, I sent this kid, and thou hast not found her. And it came to pass, about three months after that, it was told Judah, saying, Tamar, thy daughter-in-law, had played the what? Harlot. Harlot. So she dressed the part, and then she played the part. Yes, sir. Was she in Harlot? No. 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 She was just trying to get what was rightfully hers, and that was the only way she knew how to do it. Okay. Keep that thought. Amen. Thy daughter-in-law played the harlot, and also, behold, she is with child by what? Whoredom. And Judah said, bring her forth and let her be burnt. Burn. Okay, the rest of the story, of course, she uh, lets them know who she is. What's, what's my point here? She wasn't a harlot. Right. But she played the part of a harlot yep. and dressed the part. Mm -hmm. What am I saying? How you dress does matter. That's right. Although she wasn't a harlot, she was associated as one and with one. And how you and I dress associates us with somebody or somebodies. Amen. Back in California, they got the Bloods and the Crips. How are they identified? Colors. By their colors. 
and you wear the wrong colors in the wrong place, you might not come out of that place. Right, Pastor. Amen. Uh, so the point here is that your dress differentiates you from other people. In this particular passage, uh, she was not a harlot, but she dressed like one. She was a wannabe. She wasn't that kind of person, but by, by, by the way she dressed, she was identified with one. one. Now you got to ask the question, mm -hmm. was she out to fulfill God's will or her own will? Her own, her own will. will. We've got to ask the question, the way we dress, we out to fulfill God's will or our own will? God. We got to ask that question. Remember, we talked about most people get dressed for two parties, mm -hmm. ourselves and other, people. and other people. And God is the last thought. Mm -hmm. And it ought to be, God, what do you think about this? And then, you know, what, what does my uh, spouse think about this? Or my husband, my wife think about this? And then what does everybody else think about it? Right. Amen? Right. All right. So uh, that, the, the next question, the first principle is this. Your dress reveals your life character. How you dress always identifies you as a particular kind of person. So that's your blank there. How you dress always identifies you as a particular kind of person. You say, preacher, that's not true. Yes, it is. What does a doctor wear in, in the hospital? Scrubs and a white jacket. Scrubs and a white jacket. jacket. What does a, a policeman wear? A uniform. Blue uniform. Blue uniform. What does a fireman wear? A black one. What does a judge wear? A robe. Black robe. What does a nurse wear? Scrubs or white jacket. Everybody is identified by how they dress. Right. Nowadays, Sarah, you can't tell who's a preacher and who's not a preacher. You know why? It used to be that preachers used to actually dress up. Now they dress down. They, they, they've taken off their jackets and they've taken off their ties. Now they come up in polos and they got, got taken away the pulpit and uh, they has got a little stool up there and we're just going to talk to y'all. Well, last time I, I checked, the Bible said, cry aloud, spare not. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Uh, but we, we want to make the people feel comfortable. Yes. Do you know that uh, the color white, they say, uh, has a sense of authority with it? That's why back in the days, most preachers wore white shirts. Yeah. It stands for authority. Uh, along with the, the black robe that the, uh, the judge wears, it stands for judgment. Yeah. Wow, they got the gavel. Yes, sir, they do. And so you come in the judge, you see that black robe, you think, uh-oh. Whoa. Here come the judge. <laughs> Here comes the judge. Amen. So colors do have an effect and a bearing on what we say and what we do. But this first principle is this. Uh, your dress reveals your life character. How you dress always identifies you a particular kind of person. Uh, in the case of Tamar, uh, she was identified as a harlot. harlot. Amen. Yeah. Was she a harlot? No. No. But she was identified as one. The second principle is this. By the way, uh, when you go down, the, the, you know, I just listed some people, judges, doctors, uh, policemen, firemen, they all dress a certain way, military, uh, king, biker, uh, prostitute, they all uh, have a certain type of dress. Right. How should a Christian dress? That's a loaded question, isn't it? Yes, it is, Pastor. It is. That's a loaded question. Amen. Everybody else we've mentioned so far is identified by their dress. How should the Christian dress? Give me some input. How should the Christian dress? Modest. 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 The Bible doesn't tell you how to dress, but it does tell you it ought to be modest, whatever it is. Now, what does the word modest mean? Presentable. <laughs> Presentable, yeah. Modest. It talks about modest apparel. Shamefacedness. Mm -hmm. What does shamefacedness mean? Not flashy, not trying to draw attention to myself. Bashful is basically the, the connotation of shamefacedness. Yes, sir. Are the woman's line of clothing shamefacedness or bashful? Anything but. It's actually just the opposite. And so I'm hard-pressed as a Christian woman to, to shop in the most common stores. Yes, sir. My wife, she, she, she just goes crazy when she finds long skirts and long dresses. Why? You can't find them. No, you can't. Pastor. Most of the skirts and dresses that you find come right above your knee. That's right. And some of the tops look gorgeous. Mm. And then she pulls them out. Look at this, honey. And then she'll pull out the skirt. And she'll, like, ah, she'll put it back. Yeah. Why? She wants to be shamefaced. She wants to not bring attention. She wants to be bashful. She wants to be modest. And we'll talk more about that later on. Uh, but the second principle is this. Your dress reveals your level of respect. 
for yourself and others in a particular situation. Your dress reveals your level of respect for yourself and others in a particular situation. And you say, preacher, that's not true. Yeah, it is true. Yep. Brother Perkins, what do y'all have to wear for football? What would happen to the person that went out there without a uniform? Nor would you last long either. <laughs> What is that? That's a particular situation. Yes. What should a fireman wear when he's going to fight a fire? All his gear. That's a particular situation. Okay. What do most people wear when they go to a funeral, colors wise? Black. Black. Out of respect, black. What do most people wear when they go to a wedding? They normally dress up in something that looks nice and flowery. Amen. You know, the minister normally always shows up in a black suit anyway. <laughs> Amen. Uh, uh, when you go to the golf course, do they have a standard of dress at the golf course? Yes, they, yes, they do. Yes, they do you can't go to the golf course dressed any kind of way you no. want to. You've got to be covered up in areas. You've got to have on certain things. Mm -hmm. You go to the golf course, they will, they will clearly show you you've got to be in this attire or you cannot golf here. It's clearly depicted, amen. Uh, so, uh, you know, when you look at these things, by the way, you go to a graduation. How do people normally dress at graduation? They dress up. You go to a formal dinner. How do they dress? They dress up normally. Dress up. All these are particular situations. Hear me now. Mm -hmm. We should never dress any better That's for the world than we would for the house of God. Mm. Why? This is a particular situation. Yes, you know, I know folks say, well, you know, I don't know why we got to dress up. And that. You, you'll dress up for a dead person at a funeral. Right. You'll dress up for a groom and a bride. You'll dress up at the golf course. You'll dress up for your job. You'll dress up for anything. Somebody say, well, we need to dress up for God. Folks say, well, I don't know why I got to put those standards on me. Oh, boy. Hey, That's right. did we come to worship God? If we go to see the king or, or, or the president, guess what? Folks want to look presentable. Yes, sir, we do. Matter of fact, they probably won't let you in the White House unless you are presentable. That's right. That's true, That's true Pastor. Amen. Amen. Y'all saying, oh, preacher, what are you trying to say? I'm trying to say we need to follow what God says. What I'm saying is exactly what it says here. Uh, how you dress talks about the kind of person you are inwardly and the level of respect you want. Or the level of respect that you give yep. in a particular situation. Here's your blanks here. What you wear shows respect uh, towards the following four things. Number one, your respect for God. And as I said last week, most people don't even take that into consideration. God, how does this look to you? Mm -hmm. You know why? We're more concerned about impressing people. Right. I got to get me a woman. Or I got to get me a man. Mm -hmm. Or I got to impress my boss. Or I got to impress my co-workers. God. Let me show some thigh. Maybe I might get me a promotion. You won't see mine. <laughs> I got to show some, some cleavage down here. Maybe my boss will look and maybe he'll write me up and give me some, some promotions or something like that. That is not the way to get it. Right. Right. But is that not what the world says? Yes, sir. Uh, uh, I, was, uh, I was reading some article uh, and there was a lady talking and uh, she said, I know how to get around the cops giving me a ticket. Mm -hmm. She said, when the cops come up to my car, I just pull down and show them a little bit of cleavage and pull my skirt up a little bit and show them a little thigh. And before long, their attention is off the ticket and on me. And I get them in a conversation. Before long, I've talked them out of a ticket. Is that God's way? No. What has she just done? Being deceitful, played the harlot, the just about, amen, sold my body, flashed, did anything she could to use her body instead of using God. Yes. But do ladies do it all the time? Do men do it? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Show my muscle. Wear, wear me this thing so you can see my six pack. Brr, I'm strong. Yeah. I want to see your rocks. <laughs> hey, your respect for God. Number two, your respect for your environment. Your respect for your environment. Uh, because environment or our culture believes in dress standards, whether we believe it or not. 
our, our culture does believe in dress standards. It's just the world's dress standards, but they do believe in dress standards. Yes, sir. At some places, they will force you to dress a certain way or you will not come in. You ever seen the signs on the, uh, the supermarkets? Uh, no yeah. shoes, no shirt, no entry? No service. Yeah, no, no service, amen. They say, if you ain't got no shoes on, you got no shirt on, don't come in the store. Yes, what is that? A standard. Uh, but we look at the, the, the Bible and the Word of God, and we think, well, you're just being legalistic. No, we're just being moralistic. Amen. Uh, so when you look at that, amen, your respect for God, your respect for your environment. Number three, uh, and this one is going to get you, your respect for yourself as God's ambassador. <laughs> Obviously, the lady that tried to show the cleavage and show up her leg to the policeman didn't have a whole lot of respect for herself. If she's going to show herself to a total stranger, in today's age, how do you know that he doesn't have a cell phone there and he takes a picture of that and put that on the YouTube and the boot tube and all the rest of these tubes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And now she's flashed across doing this and now this and hubby sees that and says, well, honey, what were you doing on the YouTube? <laughs> yeah, what do you mean what was I doing? You was hiking it up and you was pulling it down mm -hmm. and it's on the YouTube. And she thinks, well, I only did it for that policeman. Oh. And that's all. Hey, you can't mess around today. Nope. They will get you and put you out there, and before long, your face will be everywhere. Brother Serge, I was preaching down at the youth conference up there at the, um, uh, what was that, Pine Top or Pine, whatever, that, at the, 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 the teen camp, and I saw all these telephones being held up like this. And I said, look, if any one of y'all put me on you book or Facebook or any of these books and, and try to defame me, I said, I'm going to get you, amen. Because they all had these phones doing this, and I know they wasn't calling nobody, amen, because it was all directed at me. And as I was walking around, the phones was following me. And I'm thinking, I can't get away from these phones, amen. I'm like, look, put them phones down, amen. If y'all want to get a video, get the CD, amen. Don't they're trying to record me live. That's right. I said, I don't want to see myself on YouTube. Right. And then you do something that y'all not do. Mm. Hey, you never know. But it shows your respect for yourself as God's ambassador. Are we God's ambassador? Yes. 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 And, and, and this is my pet peeve, Brother, Brother Perkins, Brother Sarich. Men showing their underwears. I just can't get that one. I, I, cannot, I cannot understand that. I don't care how you slice it. I cannot understand that. But it's trendy. It's fattish. I've seen old people with it. I'm thinking, you're constantly pulling like this, and you're constantly walking wide-legged like a cowboy, and you know, you're constantly yeah. gripping like this and walking around like this. And I'm like, what? What is, what is the purpose? <laughs> yeah, for the attention, evidently, because they get mine all the time. Pull your britches up. I see your underwears. <laughs> are we in, in ambassadors? Yes, we are. By, by the way, uh, ladies, same for you. Nobody needs to see your, your, all your legs. Nobody needs to see all your curves. Nobody needs to see all your, 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 your upper chest. Nobody needs to see that except for your husband. Amen. Amen, Pastor. Hey, long ago, my wife felt that way, even before we got saved. She's like, look, nobody ain't going to see my stuff. And I'm like, you're right, nobody ain't going to see your stuff. Amen. Hey, what am I saying? It's, it's just us and as an ambassador for God. We are Christ and we belong to him. What, what are some things that people don't, don't need to see about us besides our underwear? <laughs> Yeah, amen. amen. Anything between here and here, that's, that's a good standard, amen. Yes, yes. Hey, they don't need to see anything from here down here, amen. Why? Well, it's not there. Yes, are we in the advertising business? No. no. You would think some people are. Yes, sir. Like that lady we talked about, amen. Yeah. So as a result here, we, are, we belong to God. What? Know you not that your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost within you? Do you have God and you're not your own? By the way, even nowadays on television, do the news broadcasters have a standard? Most men wear a jacket and a tie. Yes, sir, they do. They have shorts on. Yeah, they, they can have on anything. I remember I saw Anderson Cooper one time. He had on his tie and stuff like that, and they caught him from behind the desk. He had some more raggedy jeans. I thought, like, get back behind that desk, hey, man. Like, hey, this is all you can see normally, but they caught him out from behind that desk, and I thought, ooh, man. Uh, it's a good thing you're covered up, hey, man. But most of those news broadcasters even have a standard. Should it be any different for the house of God? And for the things of God. It really should. Amen. All right. So come down there. Uh, your last one there. Uh, your respect for others around you. Do you really respect others around you? And if you do, it's going to curb the way you dress. Ladies, how would you feel if uh, another young lady came around exposing everything she had around your husband? How would you feel? 
slip them, you know, slap them, amen. <laughs> you get jealous. And she said, well, honey, I'm floating it because I got it. Look. And you said, you ain't going to have it for long if you keep that up, <laughs> amen. Uh, hey, you know, I have, I, have, I have read about preachers that uh, their, their wives, you know, will go to the ushers and say, look, if, if that girl comes back here again, make sure you sit her way in the back. Because the girls would come down and this one preacher, they would sit right down in the front row and they'd show everything they had. And the preacher's like, I'm trying to preach and I don't, I don't need to see this. So said, have the ushers sit them way in the back. No, you don't, you shouldn't have to come to the house of God and deal with that, should you? Right. Who should we be here to hear from? Who should we be here to worship? The Lord. The Lord. And that's why there is a standard that the Bible says that women and men, we ought to watch what we wear. Why? It shows our respect for God, first and foremost, our environment that we're around. And we should never dress any better for the house of God than we would outside. Amen. Why? God not only deserves better, he is better. Would you agree? He deserves better, amen, but he is better. And so we should give him our best. So your respect for yourself is God's ambassador, your respect for others uh, around you. And uh, was that, that was your last uh, question there, right? Uh, and, and you go right back to our memory verse. As a bridegroom and as a bride. Remember I talked about how a bridegroom decketh himself with his ornaments and the, the bride adorns herself, or, uh, adorns herself with her jewels. She's getting ready. Yeah. It should be the same way for us. Our environment should depict how we dress. God should be number one. We should recognize we're God's ambassador, and we should re respect others around us as well. That, that should just be standard. And we can get those things down. I mean, that, that'll be a blessing because when we come back, we're going to talk about... Um, uh, the way we dress should be appropriate to the occasion. We, they talk about at home, at church, at school, at activities or in public, at work, at special events. And, and these places all come with a different attire. But guess what? The attire still should be appropriate yep. to the Christian. Right, it should never be said like the attire of the harlot, how she put on that. Uh, why? You'll be associated with that which you put on. Amen. Amen. Anybody been, ever been mistaken for somebody that you weren't and it was a negative connotation? That's not good, is it? No. Now, if it's a positive connotation, praise God, you, you get excited about that. You know, they say, well, are you the CEO around here? <laughs> well, yeah, no, <coughs> I'm not. Well, are, are, are you the doctor around here? I'm in the hospital, you know, can you tell me where this is at? I'm like, I don't work here. I'm just a preacher. I, I don't work at this hospital. But they see I've got a tie on, I look halfway official. Mm -hmm. Why? By the way, I'm dressed. Now, if I had my underwears uh, showing and baggy britches, you think they'd ask me anything? No. Ask me to leave, maybe. Yes. Yes, sir, Pastor. If I came in and the attire of a, well, I'm not coming in the attire of a harlot. If uh, somebody came in in the attire of a harlot, <laughs> you think they would ask them something? Oh, amen. They say, you're upsetting the patients, their blood pressure's rising, you need to leave, amen. <laughs> you need to get out of here. What are we talking about here? Uh, when you look at this, it always identifies as a, a, a particular kind of person. That's the first principle. The second principle is this. Your dress reveals your level of respect for yourself and others in a particular situation. What you wear shows your respect towards the following four things. Respect for God, uh, for your environment, for yourself, and your respect for others around you. Watch what we wear. Why? Every place has a level of uh, uh, dress standards. Golf courses, weddings, funerals, all the places we talked about and uh, our respect for God should not be any less than for somebody else. Amen. As a matter of fact, it should be above that. Amen. Uh, we should honor God more above. Your dress always reveals your character and love respect. You're not going to hear uh, from this for a long time, uh, probably until the summer months. So take this to heart. Uh, go before the mirror before you get out of the house and say, God, what do you think about this? Mm -hmm. uh, if you're not sure, ladies, ask your husband. Husbands, if you're not sure, ask your wives. How does this look? Is it, you think this is pleasing to God? And he's got the Holy Spirit in us going to let us know yes or no. Yeah. We've got a spouse that says, I don't want somebody to see anything that they ought not see. And so ask your spouse, hey, how does this look? Uh, if you're a single, ask your parents. Ask, if you're a girl, ask your dad. If you're uh, a, 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 a woman, uh, ask your girl. Girl, ask your mom. Ask your mom. Uh, men, ask your dad. Ask your dad, yeah. Amen. Amen, Pastor. And see what they say. Yeah. 
hey, uh, when my kids get to a certain age, when they get on their own, they can dress how they want to. When, they, when they're at home, I, I'm going to control that. Yes, sir, Pastor. Why? They reflect me. Amen. Amen, Pastor. They, they reflect me, and so I want to make sure that we're identifying uh, with the right thing. Amen. Any questions on this thus far? Because we won't get back to this for a while. Amen. Everybody's got those? Uh, in other words, your, your heart purity and holiness should define what you wear. Uh, the first principle is this. Your dress reveals your life character. How you dress always identifies you as a particular kind of person. The second principle is this. Your dress reveals your level of respect for yourself and others in a particular situation. What you wear should uh, show your respect towards the following four things. Your respect for God, your environment, uh, yourself as God's ambassador, uh, your respect for others around you. Amen. Yep. Ladies, men, let's have that uh, moral, godly decency to make sure that we're not drawing undue attention to ourselves that's going to bring attention to us and take it away from God where it belongs. And that is what we should do. Amen. Um, I would give you a memory verse, but you guys won't remember it for the next three months. So <laughs> I'll give you one anyway. Amen. All right. I'll give you this one here. Uh, this is the one that I was going to give you anyway. Uh, but we're not going to be there. Uh, 1 Peter 2.9, many of you have had that already, uh, but uh, that's a good one. Um, 1 Peter 2.9. 1 Peter 2.9, but ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and a holy nation, a peculiar people that ye should show for the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. 1 Peter 2.9. And uh, that'll carry you over the next several months. Uh, meditate on that and chew on that a little bit and recognize who and what we are. Amen. And uh, pray for Brother uh, Larson. He'll be here next week. Amen. Then Brother Serge, like I said, he'll be doing it next uh, week after that. And then we'll get into Brother Duffy, uh, Brother uh, Lenart, and then Brother Serge will have the last two Sundays. Amen. Amen. All right. Let's have a word of prayer. We'll be dismissed. Father, thank you for your goodness and your grace on our lives, Lord. Thank you for the things that we can look at in Scripture. Uh, Lord, with just the example of how the harlot dressed, never said that she was a harlot, but had the attire of a harlot, God, because how we dress matters. Uh, it represents us. And, Lord, there's a, a level of respect that comes with that, and there's a level of character that is also portrayed in that. And uh, who and what we are oftentimes is portrayed in how we dress. Lord, it's not always true, and uh, we understand that, but uh, oftentimes it is. And in the case of Tamar, it wasn't true for her, but she played the part for a while and our Lord did the, the deeds of that particular uh, harlot's position, although she was not one. And so, Lord, help us not to even play the part and neither to act the part, uh, but to dress the part of the Christian, uh, to be uh, modest in that which we wear, uh, Lord, to make sure that what people need to see, they see and what they ought not see, uh, they need not see. But most of all, may they see Christ in us, uh, the hope of glory. Thank you now, Lord. Take us into our next session and we'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And amen, you are dismissed.